This is our original porch roof. The windows over top of the porch roof are circa 1920s, maybe 25. That's the so-called kitchen addition that was added on. And they're short windows. They match the windows on the other side of the house. And they're going to be a problem later on in this video. But anyway, this is what the original roof looked like. Now, the problem was that it was a hot roof. And if you notice in this image, the varnished boards that were visible back in the 20s or 30s, whenever the porch was put on, are all discolored and brown. They've been cooked because of the heat. So I decided the roof had to be a so-called cold roof where the air would come in the soffits, travel uphill, and then exit out at the wall where the windows are. So I had a company, I'm not even sure that they were a roofing company, they were a construction company, but they cut a slot and they were going to put in a core event vent for me. This is what it looked like when it was done and it leaked like a sieve. They didn't do it correctly. They didn't follow the instructions I gave them. So what I had to do was get up on the roof after talking to the manufacturer of Coravent, rip it all off and see what they had done. And what they had done is instead of taking all those shingles off so that the Coravent would lay right flat on the roof boards, they put it on top of the shingles. You can't do that and that's why it leaked. So my first step was peel all of the shingles away to get down to either the boards or the tar paper. It was boards against the house and tar paper on the other side of the slot. So once I got that, that's what I had the full length. And you can see all the stuff that I peeled off. So then I proceeded to lay down a brand new core event that I got from the manufacturer and do it correctly. So I laid that down, then I put that sticky tape stuff over top. I'm, I'm not sure what you call it. I'm not a roofer. I just know you have to put it on. And then I folded it up in under the side of the house. That was the main reason why the core event leaked with the other guys. They didn't flash it against the house. So I went ahead and did it. And then I took the shingles any that were that I had that were any good and I put them and glued them back over the core event and when I was done guess what it didn't leak and it stayed there through till those shingles on the right were worn out and uh, I had another company come in and put a new set of shingles on they I guess they took those off and put new shingles on and they kept the core event because they said it was done very well so now we come to the people that are putting on the metal roof. I told the boss or owner, I guess it was, that I had that car event. He didn't bother to tell his people. They didn't know what it was, so they started ripping and tearing. And as you can see, they ripped it all to pieces and there was nothing left and it couldn't be saved. So I told them that what they have to do is peel it all out of there. I gave them a roll of that sticky tape. I said, go over the slot and cover that up and I've got to order a new vent. Now the core vents can't be used with the metal roof, but I was going to make an attempt to do so by raising it up. However, I didn't get the chance. So they laid that down, but what they had done, and I realized it later, when you see right here that it was raining inside the porch, the tape that they pulled up was also the flashing tape that I had up in under the side of the house. So therefore, in a rainstorm out of the south, it rained in the porch. So I ordered from Metal Era one of their roof-to-wall vents that is designed to work with either a shingle or a metal roof. And eventually, it, I mean, it took, oh, five, six weeks to get it. And this is how their roof-to-wall vent is supposed to look when it is fully assembled. The air comes up against the wall, goes through the bug shield, 
goes through the bug shield again, comes down and goes under the face of it. And you can just follow the blue arrows and exits. Well, the roof to wall vent finally arrived. There's the mesh. There's the pieces of the galvanized steel. There's the end caps. That's the top. So now that I've got that, I got to get up on the roof and install it. So step one was to put the roof ceiling tape back on that they ripped off. Get it back up under the siding and get that sealed. Although it may not be necessary because the vent should prevent any water from getting in there. Now I asked the roofers to take that ceiling foam and seal the end of the roof. Of course they didn't. And I had to make two trips down to their house to get the foam. And now I've got to reach under about three to four inches and set it on the first nailer and tuck it up in. And I discovered that I can't do it with the built-in stickum, so I cut it and leave the backing on because the important part is that. That isn't going to matter. But that definitely, because that goes all the way down to the end of the roof. So the next step is to remove the tape that I had the roofers put on over the slot after they ripped off the existing vent. So I just got to kind of feel for it. Get an idea roughly where it is. Then I can go right down through everything. Yeah, and that appears to be it right there. So you can see there's my slot and it goes full length. It's about an inch, a little more. So I got to cut all that tape out of there. And when it's all cut, it looks like that. So what I have to do is take caulk and go along the area right here and this Z channel will set in it. That will seal it and then I got to put screws in. And so, as soon as I get my gloves on here, I've got the caulk done. I'm going to take the Z channel and set it down in like that. And then what I got to do is I got to come along and put in screws. And then to seal this here, I'm going to caulk that. So, what I'm using is these Hillman self tapping screws, inch and a quarter by 12. To make them work, you have to have this adapter. Then you take a 5 16 socket, and that will go into the socket. So this goes into there. Trying to do it all one handed. That goes on to there. And that goes on to there. And then, of course, you got your driver, and that's my rear B impact. So, the way I'm putting them in is like this. Ooh, almost lost camera. Well, there is 19 feet of the Z channel. Now I just got to caulk it. Well, it's the end of the day. Z channel's in, and as you can see, it's all caulked and waterproof. Tomorrow will be the bug grill. So I bought these Everbuilt 
uh, sheet metal screws, number 10 by one inch, that are going to attach that bug screen to that. So anyway, I got to get this into position. Problem is when I do, it's going to take about a third of that window up into the attic storeroom, which I suppose isn't the worst thing in the world because it's just a catch-all storage. Well, there's the first 12-foot piece of the B-Guard. I just got just a short piece to overlap and screw down. Then I can see about putting the top on this thing. And I'm going to have to do something about the windows. But uh, probably some flashing. And I'll just cover up half the window. That's what I'm thinking because of the way they did it. Either that or remove the, all the windows. But I don't really want to do that. So at this point in time, I've got the bug shield full length. Well, there's the left end cap for the top piece. And... Because of the way my roof is set up, I got to chop that much off and that much off. The thing I don't understand is if this goes up against the wall, what is this piece doing? It's not going to set out that far from the wall. Also, I've got either assembly or shipping damage. That's got a little wrinkle. That's got a pretty good wrinkle that I got to fix. Well, guess you don't get much for $1,200 anymore. Well, there's the first 12-foot section of the top of the vent. Let me tell you, that was a bear getting that up there by myself. And then right there is the patch going to the end cap. I couldn't quite get the end cap as flat as I wanted. So the wind-driven rain supposedly goes under that, hits that Z channel, and stops. Well, the vent itself is complete. That right hand side's a bit high, I'm not sure why. Because everything was folded down to that Z channel. But, I finished that up last night around the cap on right there. So the only thing left to do is where it uh, goes in front of the windows. I've got a couple pieces that I'm going to try to pop rivet in place. And I got to hurry because if you can see those clouds, we got rain coming. So I'm in a race to get that done. So this is the piece that I cut and pre-drilled that's gonna go up and seal against the window and you keep falling. Wind's blowing. Anyway, that's how it's going to go. All I have to do is drill through those pre-drilled holes and put pop rivets. So there's the drill, our drilled hole. Pop rivet gun, long pop rivet. There we go. So that is now in, and it's pretty solid. I cut it from a, an extra piece of the material that they gave me. It doesn't show on the uh, instructions as to what it was supposed to be, so I just decided to use it for this um, little shelf. It's gonna half cover the window. And then, caulk gun. And I got to caulk it. Come on.
Now when it's done, I've just got to do the other window. Well, I was in a race against that rain coming and I just barely made it by maybe two and a half hours before there was torrential downpours. And guess what? It didn't rain on the porch. So I guess I did it correctly. And that is how I repaired and actually installed a brand new roof to wall vent after my roofers destroyed the one that I had.